Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna give you my tips on how I became a creative director and how I practiced leadership way before I actually became a creative director. Let's get into it. First up, absorb and process. So you're a copywriter or a graphic designer and you have no one below you on your team, but you are interested in becoming a leader. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually have to be in a leadership position to learn and practice leadership. In fact, this is the secret way to becoming a killer leader. Think about it. If you're incredible at your craft, why would you get promoted versus just getting a nice raise? If you go into leadership, what's that key thing that's going to get you into a leadership position rather than just into a really high senior role? Because a new position means that you need other skills. Spoiler alert, you need to have leadership skills to become a great creative director, not just be a good graphic designer or a good copywriter. Let's get into this. Step one, be a sponge. Absorb everything from the hard skills of your craft to the sort of soft, hazy parts of leadership. You need both to move up the ladder. I actually just made a video about this, so I'll link that down below in the description box. For me, when I was a graphic designer, I started keeping a diary or a journal of all of my leaders and all of my creative directors and all of their strengths and their weaknesses. Specifically, I would write down how I felt when they treated me a certain way. I also made note of how my performance was positively or negatively affected and I also made note of how the project did. Yes, I, I actually did that. I have no idea what sparked me to do that, but I did do it, so moving on. Step 2. Distill. As time went on, I would distill all of these interactions into traits that I noticed that they had, and then I would write down the traits that I wanted to embody as a leader. I also made note of the traits that I really didn't like and wanted to avoid like the plague. Keep in mind, I had yet to be in a leadership position at this point. So by the time that I actually got into a creative leadership position, my career advanced really rapidly because I was ready to go. Yes, of course, once I got into that role, there were certain things that I had to figure out as I got into it. There's always a gap between the trait that you want to embody and actually embodying it, especially when there's stress, deadlines, and you know late nights. But I was miles ahead of my colleagues who weren't even thinking about the change between being a good doer and a great leader. Now, here's the exercise that I would love to share with you. So grab a pen and paper and let's dive into this together. <laughs> now, if you're not a total nerd and you haven't been keeping a list of traits that your creative directors and leaders had like I did, you're very normal and <laughs> that's perfectly all right. So I'll just give you my list and we can do this exercise together. However, that said, please do have a great think about this and add in other words to this. This is a very short list. Here are some positive traits that I found in my leaders that I had throughout my career. So like I said, please add additional words into this as you see fit. Let's start by circling the six that appeal most to you. So the list is considerate, intelligent, visionary, Empathetic, hardworking, reliable, motivational, well-respected, passionate, doesn't micromanage or trusting, decisive, chill and easygoing, meticulous, empowering, driven, strategic, and organized. So my words that I had written down, my six were empowering, empathetic, reliable, well-respected, trusted, and decisive. Now, narrow them down to three. <laughs> In an ideal world, you would want to be a version of pretty much all of these. And to an extent, extent, you should have a lot of these in mind. But as you grow, you want to focus your areas on a trident approach. So three areas that really resonate in other people's minds when they think of you as a leader. Mine personally are decisive, empathetic, and empowering. Negatives. Now, let's Circle all the negative words that you've seen in your leaders that you've worked with. Maybe you've reported into them. Maybe you just sort of worked alongside them or you saw them on set. You know, maybe you've heard about these people from your colleagues. Same exercise, grab six words from this list. Definitely still add your own of the six things that you personally want to avoid. Now, the list is unreliable, forgetful, siloed, withdrawn, quick to anger, overly critical, gossipy, weak, 
blames others, hugs the glory, passive, confusing, demotivating, uninterested, flat. Now, same thing as before. Try to circle the three that are just your absolute hard no's. It's also a good idea to include with this practice how these words made you feel as a creative if you happen to have examples. So my personal three words that impacted me the most are unreliable, blames others, and gossipy. Step three, time to practice. The beauty of this method, like I said at the beginning, is that you don't need your own team to practice embodying the traits that you want to emulate. For example, if decisiveness is a trait that you really want to practice, you can do so in each and every project that you're on. If kindness is a trait, that's an easy one to do with your colleagues on a daily basis. Now, step four, craft your systems. Don't skip this step, my friends. The one thing I want you to pay particular attention to though is what happens to these dream traits and these negative traits when deadlines are looming. You're stressed, you're tired. Do you revert to unhealthy traits? I do. I'll be the first one to put up my hand and say that I definitely do that. I am not perfect. But if you wanna be a great leader, like really, really, really wanna be a great leader, you have to come up with systems in place to keep you accountable. So for example, this is not a great example, but this is what I do. My goal is to be empowering and I like to do that through teaching, but teaching gets very difficult when you're in back-to-back -back meetings all day for weeks on end or on set with a big campaign and you just don't really have the time to get that you know, good one-on-one -on -one educational time with your team. So what I've done is I've taken all of the things that I've saved over the years for myself. You know, hundreds of links saved for how-tos, how to use a program, techniques to get a creative effect, links to books that I love, YouTube videos, you know, how to give presentations and leaderships and masterclasses, tons of stuff. So that when I'm slammed, I can at least provide something to these people on my team or my colleagues for them to dive deeper on their own. I want to ask you, what systems can you employ to drive home your traits? And when the going gets tough, which it will, how can you avoid your top three negative words? Remember, you don't need a team to start practicing leadership. Start tomorrow. Thanks for watching.